My name is Motoshi Kosako. I'm a harpist, composer, and improviser. On this video series, I would like to share interesting cutting-edge technique of modern harp playing. On this month, I would like to make a few videos dedicated to Miles Davis, who passed away on September 28th in 1991. And probably all of you I love his music and his uh, approach uh, to the improvisation. So I'm gonna pick up a few pieces he played uh, in the past recording and um, try to adapt those music to harp. And first piece I picked for this series is Blue in Green. And this is a beautiful ballad and especially our first two chords on this music is very distinctive and almost, almost like a signature sound of modern jazz. Uh, that progression is major 7th, sharp 11th to 7th uh, chord uh, with a sharp 9th. The how to play those chord progression is a little bit tricky uh, so I would like to talk about some technical aspect of uh, this chord progression and also, I would like to talk about how to improvise on this type of music. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, this program about Blue in Green. Maybe some of you are not familiar with uh, this piece, Blue in Green. So I would like to play a theme uh, once to let you hear what kind of music we are going to discuss about today. And here is a chord progression. The first chord, B flat major 7, sharp 11, is really cool. It sounds like this. And the theme uh, is E, D. So it means a sharp 11 to 3rd, uh, it's uh, resolving. But the darkness of this interval make the harmony really jazzy in a kind of shadowy kind of chord um, and since it includes E natural also for me it's, it sounds like implying that a E half diminished chord which is usually uh, in the jazz we use as a subdominant go to A7 and resolve into uh, D minor. So if I use the E a half diminished, so this kind of progression, instead of using this, uh, this is a E uh, half diminished, uh, you can replace this one with the uh, B flat major 7th sharp 11th. Similar but very different at the same time. And the next chord is the really cool one, which is A7 a sharp ninth. Sounds like a, like this. So I play uh, this chord progression from B flat major sevens sharp elevens, and then A7 sharp ninth. And A7's flat ninth 
So wow, this is like, for me, this is like ultimate uh, modern jazz sound. So, but there's a paradox on this a 7 sharp ninth chord. So I'd like to explain uh, what, it, what the paradox is for the harpist. So here's a chord progression again. And, and if you take a look here, I uh, picked out all the notes involved in this a 7s uh, sharp ninth and flat ninth chord. And of course, root is A. And this is seventh chord, so it requires major third, which is C sharp. And then fifth is E, seventh is G, and ninth. So we have two ninth, uh, sharp ninth and flat ninth. The sharp ninth is C uh, natural, and the flat ninth is B flat. And some people think, why we don't use the uh, B sharp as a C natural because already C sharp is used here. Well, because and a melody requires movement from C natural to B flat, so it's better to leave these two notes available on the instrument. So what shall we do with C sharp? Because on harp you cannot play C sharp and C natural at the same time. But if you change C sharp to D flat, so this problem is solved. So I often uh, choose between uh, C sharp and D flat depending on what kind of phrase you want to play on the improvisation. But for the theme, I definitely use D flat instead of C sharp. So the pedal chart will be, we begin with uh, this. That we make D as a D flat. So this uh, minor dominant motion is uh, very typical, especially in a seventh chord uh, in jazz. We use a lot of sharp ninths and flat ninths. So to be able to use a flat ninth and sharp ninth, I often choose to use the a minor fourth as a major third, which we, in this case actually I use a D flat. D is a fourth note and then make that fourth note flat. So this first progression is very similar to the uh, Stella by Starlight uh, progression. Let's start from E, uh, half diminution. So, if you use a C sharp seven chord, you have a so this kind of scale you can use. So, not bad. But if you use the uh, sharp lines on a, eight, a seven chord, which is really cool. So it goes like a, and you get a D flat. Though. As a sharp third, and then use C natural as a sharp, uh, sharp ninth. So it's it's really distinctively jazzy if you use a sharp ninth, and then especially if you use a sharp ninth to flat ninth uh, movement. It's cool. And when you uh, play ballad, uh, it doesn't mean you can tempo rubato all the time. Uh, for jazz ballad, you have to keep the groove. Although it's very slow, but you need to keep the swing kind of groove going on and then rhythm need to be very accurate even though um, you can sway your phrasing a little bit uh, kind of ahead or behind 
but basic bit must be pretty accurate. So like you have to start like uh, thinking about the group. One, two, one, two, three. So uh, it's better to uh, put a contrast on your phrasing, like a hard sound and soft sound, and short note and long note, and fast passage and slow passage. So when you're stretching the note, you imagine you're playing the wind instrument. You just try to sustain. Of course, uh, as a physically, the half doesn't sustain the sound, but if you mentally sustain the sound, it carries on, actually. That's kind of magical, half playing. And they use a short note. So by using the short note, actually, you can tell the audience difference between uh, the intention of playing short note and the intention of the long note. So as a consequence, uh, the, the note you don't stop actually relatively sound like a really long sustained note. So this is kind of a trick, but uh, it works. So try to use a lot of contrast and also uh, use a space. And if you listen to Miles Davis, he used a lot of space. And contrast between space and notes actually create the beautiful shape of music. So yes, music is right music of the living moment. So this is, by the way, uh, the t-shirts I made for my trio. So my uh, the first album with this trio will be released in October and we're working on uh, finalizing the product. But anyway, Komaga Trio, it's a really cool trio. You can find our YouTube uh, the concert uh, video clip uh, from last year's outdoor concert. If you like this video, you'll love this band. Anyway, so, um, so making space is very important. So you can uh, make a big space and then make it musical. But difficulty to make space in a ballad is it's so slow. So sometimes you're not comfortable to keep the tempo without playing notes. So that's why it's so important to have uh, internal groove going on while you're not plucking. I would like to demonstrate a performing a blue and green. Thank you. 